Every year, the dairy industry in Canada loses approximately $30 million as the result of a disease prevalent among dairy cattle, a disease of the udder called mastitis. The disease attacks the udder, causing inflammation and resulting in deformed and shrunken quarters and a decrease in the milk flow. Production is often reduced as much as 30%. Milk from infected cows is of poor quality, off flavor. When mixed with good milk, it results in a lower grade for the whole output. The butterfat content may be reduced by more than 25%. And when the disease reaches an advanced form, a high-grade producer is sent to the block three or four years before her time. Mastitis is common among all breeds of cattle, in all countries, but occurs with greatest frequency in dairy herds. Scientists discovered preventative measures as early as 1888 in France. Yet today there is still very little attention paid to prevention and control of the disease. A dairyman may have to replace 15% of his herd in one year because of mastitis. The disease occurs in the udder of the cow, but the infection sometimes spreads to the other organs of the body. When it is allowed to run its course, a high producer may end up like this. Large herds often suffer more severely than small ones because of lack of individual attention. Two types of the disease are commonly seen. Both are disastrous to the udder if not checked in time. One, the acute type, comparatively rare, causes serious inflammation and works rapidly in the udder. It often results in death to the cow or serious injury to the udder. More serious in economic loss is the second type, known as chronic mastitis. The germs which cause this disease may be present in the udder for a long time without the farmer knowing it. Usually, chronic mastitis is recognized at first by the intermittent appearance of small flecks, clots, shreds, or pus in the milk. These can be caught on a strip cup if the first few squirts of milk are used for the test. Blood in the milk is a sign of injury or infection. The strip cup will reveal any abnormal condition, and if used often enough, is a practical help in detecting the first signs of the disease. Mastitis is caused by germs of several different kinds. Staphylococci are usually present when the disease is the acute form. The more frequent, however, are the streptococci, which cause from 70 to 90 percent of all bovine udder infection. They invade the udder of the cow and pass from one animal to another by way of the teat canal. A normal udder, when in good condition, is well balanced and uniform, with large milk veins, the teats evenly placed, the tissue healthy and pliable. The bacteria attack a normal, healthy udder through the small opening at the end of the teat. The germs usually enter one teat first, and therefore are present in one quarter first. A normal udder is divided externally by a central groove into halves. Each half has two indistinct quarters. Internally, the halves are completely separated by a strong suspensory ligament. A thin membrane divides the two glands of each half. This is only seen in specially prepared specimens. The opening at the end of the teat is called the teat canal and is kept closed by a circular muscle. This canal leads directly to the milk cistern from which 10 to 12 large ducts pass upward, dividing like the branches of a tree, terminating in grape-like clusters of cells which secrete the milk. Here is a section of an udder showing a normal functioning quarter, soft, velvety and pliable. Here is an acutely inflamed quarter showing marked swelling, congestion, with particles of pus due to injury. The teat was stepped on. The germs of the disease first of all attack the lining of the milk cistern and the larger milk ducts, and from there they spread into the secreting tissue of the gland. This is the result when the disease is not stopped in its first stages, when germs have been allowed to enter the teat opening or through rough sore spots on the teat. A damaged teat is exposed to germs. 
Open sores or badly chapped teats are serious contributory causes of mastitis. The teats of an easy milker with their wide openings are especially vulnerable to the disease. Any injury should be attended to at once. Chronic mastitis affects the udder in various ways, often causing large hard swellings, the udder becoming misshapen and long. Mastitis may cause the udder to become shrunken or unbalanced. It may cause permanent abscesses or running sores. The disease shows greater frequency as the cow advances in age up to the fourth or fifth year. The germs can live for weeks in the dry udder of a cow or in the immature udder of a growing heifer where they remain dormant until freshening. Raw milk containing mastitis germs, if fed to young calves, may be a source of infection at an early stage should the calves acquire the bad habit of sucking each other. The germs are carried in their mouths from the infected milk to the udder of the young calf or heifer. Wire masks or separate pens will protect them against danger. Feeding disease-free milk when calves or young heifers are running loose is another precaution. This will often save a fine young heifer from infection before the start of her lactation. With continued precautions, this will go a long way to safeguard both her and her calf from early attacks by the strep germs. To prevent the spread of the disease, it is necessary to detect it in the early stages. The regular use of a strip cup is the best way for the farmer to recognize mastitis. The appearance of clots or unusual signs in the milk is intermittent and therefore the regular use of the cup is necessary. The test will serve as a warning. Segregation and immediate treatment of the suspect cow will ensure against possible spread of the disease until a full check is made. She should be placed at the end of the milking line to avoid potential contamination to known healthy animals. There is another check which can also be done on the farm, but which requires some experience. It is called the brome thymol blue test. Some of the first milk is squirted into a bottle containing brome thymol blue. If the solution changes color, it is a further indication that mastitis is present. A third way requiring the skill of a veterinary surgeon is the palpating of a milked out udder, feeling for scarred tissues. The last two methods vary for their success according to the stage of the disease. A combination of the three tests with laboratory examination of the milk is the best way to find out if mastitis germs are present. This should be done in those provinces that maintain veterinary diagnostic laboratories. Some veterinary surgeons maintain private laboratories. After washing with a disinfectant cloth, each teat is carefully cleansed using a cotton swab soaked in alcohol. A strip cup is used to catch the first few streams of milk which are not suitable for laboratory examination. When the above precautions have been taken, milk from each quarter is squirted into sample bottles prepared and labeled. The bottle should be closed immediately to avoid contamination from the air. The milk should be kept cool and sent to the nearest veterinary diagnostic laboratory. Veterinary laboratories which conduct this work are well equipped for the purpose. The milk samples are incubated at body temperature for about 18 hours. The bacteria multiply rapidly. The mastitis germs are isolated and grown in special culture for detailed study.
Some are put directly onto slides for examination under the microscope. The scientists send detailed reports to the veterinary surgeon or farmer. If farmers will make tests and keep records of each suspect cow, they will be able to identify most of the infected animals and prevent the spread of the disease through the herd. Until recently, mastitis was considered to be incurable, but new drugs have made early treatment effective. In some forms of mastitis, sulfur tablets given through the mouth are advisable. Penicillin may be used in solid form, called a bougie, a wax suppository inserted into the teat. Penicillin may be injected into the teat in liquid form. It requires the services of a veterinary surgeon to administer this treatment, although the farmer, after a few demonstrations, may do the job himself. The earlier the infection is suspected and treatment given, the less expensive is the cure. The new drugs will cure mastitis if given in the early stages. But preventing the spread of the disease through the herd is the most important thing the farmer can do. He can accomplish a great deal by removing danger spots around the yard. Take care that rough places are eliminated and that there is no possibility of the cow's udder being injured. A checkup around the barns and yards will repay the time and labor many times over. If machinery must be left in the yard, fence it off. Wet, mucky yards cause udders to become dirty and chilled, increasing the danger of infection. Some of the careless habits of the past, dirty hands, lack of attention to clothing, failure to wash the cow's udder, were among the most serious offenses against the cow and the milk supply. Wet milking spreads the disease and is one of the most insanitary and serious offenses against the production of clean, safe milk. Persons with sores on their hands or throat infection should not be allowed to milk. Some of the streptococcus germs have been found to live for several days in barnyard dirt. New sprays make flies easy to control these days. Provide space enough so udders will not be tramped on or damaged. Curbs which are too short cause pressure on the udder. Too little bedding exposes the udder to cold and injury. If infection is present, incomplete milking renders the udder more vulnerable to the disease. Rough, careless handling of the cow is unworthy of a good dairyman. Forcing for records of production by feeding a ration too high in protein overworks the udder and may cause a serious flare-up of mastitis. The use of a milk siphon may be dangerous if it is not sterilized. Teat tubes may be kept sterile by placing them in a bottle of 70% alcohol or other disinfectant. Everything which comes in contact with the cow and the milk should be clean and sterile. If using a milking machine, it is essential that all parts are thoroughly clean and disinfected. Brush down the cow. It will pay in clean, good quality milk. Wash your hands before milking and between cows. Be sure the hands are really clean and that a disinfectant is used to kill germs. Wash the cow's udder and remove excessive moisture by wiping with a cloth just one minute before milking. Use the strip cup regularly and record any new developments. Milk regularly, rapidly and thoroughly. Use clean equipment and secure clean milk. When machine milking is practiced, be sure that thorough sterilization is done every day, winter and summer. Be sure the machine is perfectly clean and properly adjusted. If the machine is used correctly, the cow will be contented and the milk will be increased. Careful adjustment as the milk flow diminishes 
will enable stripping to be done by machine with complete safety to the udder. When using the milking machine, be sure to disinfect the teat cups after milking each cow. This should be done by immersing the assembly into a pail containing a disinfectant. All diseased animals should be placed at the end of the row and milked last. Proper cleaning of all equipment after milking will keep the bacteria count low. For the milking machine, first use a cold water rinse immediately after milking. Then a hot water rinse, drawing one gallon of hot water through each unit. Wash all equipment thoroughly with hot water containing hypochlorite solution. Teat cups should be filled with lye solution. When a milking machine is used, cows suspected of having the disease should be hand stripped. This is worth the extra time as the development of the disease is slowed down. When moving from one group of cows to the next, use extra care with disinfectant. Use a different cloth to wash each cow. Careless washing, one cloth to three or four cows, wastes time and money and spreads the disease. The drying off period is another particularly critical time for udder infection. A flare-up frequently occurs at this time even in apparently normal cows. Hand milking is imperative and treating suspect cows following the last milking is an effective way of preventing serious trouble both at the drying off period and later when freshening. When a cow has just freshened, the danger of mastitis is very great and the udder should be treated most carefully. Lots of bedding and a roomy stall are essential. Careful feeding and hand milking will pay in protection to the udder. If proper prevention and treatment methods are followed, we shall cut down the $30 million loss every year through the spread of mastitis. We will protect the cow's udder against this costly disease. Improve the quantity and quality of the milk. Bring more dollars into the farm every year. And ensure a long and productive life for the dairy herd. <laughs>